Hello students, it's your history teacher with another online lecture. Today it's topic Slovak National Uprising. This was the final stage of our resistance effort. And now let's look at the background. After turning points of 1942, you know, after Battle of Midway, Battle of El Alamein and the Battle of Stalingrad, the Clare fascists realized that the end of the World War II was very close. And after the Christmas Agreement, idea of one united uprising appeared. You know, the Christmas Agreement was agreement between two branches of the resistance. So they united to make one uprising against the clear fascist government and the Nazi Germany that was controlling it. The main goal of Slovak National Uprising was to help the Red Army to cross the Carpathian Mountains. And after that, liberation of Slovakia could start. So after 1942, when a lot of people started to hesitate, if they are on the right side, and Slovak state was not longer able to avoid the partisan campaigns of home resistance, because the troops that were sent to oppress these partisan campaigns often joined them. So these troops were getting lost in Slovak woods and partisan groups were growing bigger. Because of that, Germany did not trust the Slovak government to manage the situation any longer. When the resistance started to plan the Slovak national uprising, they had two plans, A and B. A is that it will be very well prepared and only after it will break out and plan B that was the backup plan. It considered the possibility that plan A would be revealed at any phase of the organization and the economic preparation for this possibility was prepared by Imrich Karvash and Peter Zaczko, who were transferring the finances from Bratislava to Banska Bystrica and so preparing these finances for the needs of the resistance. You know, Banska Bystrica was center of the uprising, so all of the sources had to be in the center in any case. So the backup plan counted on the possibility that the plan A would be revealed and they would have to make the uprising happen anyways. So the only thing they could do was to make a reserve of finances of all of the resources and still be prepared for that option. So now we know that after 1942 there were tensions because the Germany did not trust the Slovak government. Some people were leaving the Clero fascist side and changing it for the partisan campaigns. The uprising was in the preparation by the resistance. Finances were transferred to Banska Bystrica by Karvash and Zaczko and everybody knew that very soon, this tension can start any time. And they were right. Such situation that was like start and button for the uprising was when German military mission that traveled from Romania to Germany was killed in Verutki. And as a reaction, the Wehrmacht, the German army, started to occupy Slovak territory and many Slovak garrisons had to surrender. The presence of German Wehrmacht on our territory was that starting button that the uprising needed. Of course, it was still not fully prepared. So under these circumstances, the Slovak National Uprising was activated as the Plan B and started on August 29, 1944, by the radio announcement of Jan Golian with his message, Zacznijcie z Vistiahovanim. I think it's not important to translate this message because it was in the radio like that and we do not need to translate it. Okay, this is information that I hope everybody has heard about. So remember that because on that day we have like national holiday and this date is very important to know. Also that it was in Banska Bystrica where Jan Golian announced this message in the radio. This was the message that the resistance needed to be activated. After that, Slovak National Council declared itself 
the only rightful government that wanted to restore the Czechoslovak Republic. We know that it was created by Christmas Agreement, so it was the very crucial institution. So on August 29, 1944, Slovak National Council was finally activated as the only rightful government that wanted to restore the Czechoslovak Republic. However, it was Plan B. This plan had to be revealed because of the sudden outbreak, and it caused the organization problems. For example, the resistance had still poor equipment and also they lacked supplies, even though that there were some finances transferred. That's why Slovak National Council asked the USSR to speed up the Karpat Dukla operation to free the eastern border and so open the way to Slovakia so the Red Army could liberate it. Karpat Dukla operation consisted of many battles in this region. The Battle of Dukla Pass was one of the biggest in Slovakia. The season of the pass by Soviets and the first Czechoslovak army corps was not the end and the fighting spread to the eastern Slovakia. There were many bloody battles and that's maybe also reason why an area near Svidnik has come to be known as Wally of Death. So it was not so easy to get the Red Army into our territory. To support the Slovak national uprising by supplies, equipment and everything they lacked, the Free Oaks airport in Sliac was chosen to be the strategic point, in fact an air bridge through which the USA and mainly the USSR supported the uprising. Also, they sent us manpower, so many partisans were from abroad. I've put there just one example, so the French partisans who were fighting in the Trečno. There's also a monument, and I think I've read an article just not so long ago that the last of these French partisans who participated in the campaigns and battles around Stechno died. So this was a little bit of regional history. And let's go to the other powers. So the whole Slovak forces consisted of 18,000 partisans and 60,000 mobilized soldiers that were led by Jan Gullian and Rudolf Viest. Jan Gullian, who announced the motto by radio announcement and Rudolf Viest were both military commanders. But even though they, they led the Slovak forces, Banska Bystrica, the center of Slovak national uprising, fell on October 27, 1944, after heavy fights and the commanders were arrested. Also Jan Golian and Rudolf Viest as well. Both of them died in 1945 in German concentration camp Flossenburg. So the battle of Banska Bystrica was not successful and as a reaction to the uprising, more than 60 villages around all of the Slovakia were burned. For example, Niemiecka, Ostri Gruń, Klak, Balaże, Tokaik, Kremnička, Mladonio, Kaliste, Kremnička, Balaże, Niemiecka, these are around Banska Bystrica, so these were burnt as the first ones. Many of the others that I didn't write down were burnt because the Germans had some evidence that they were hiding the partisans or helping them in some way, or sometimes they didn't even have an evidence. And these were really brutal things. Even though these villages were not completely destroyed, like for example Lidica and Lajaki, these were burned, so they were burning the houses and shooting the man, but still some people and houses remained. But Lidica and Lajaki, they were all men that were over the age of 16 years were shot. Women and children were sent to the concentration camps. All of the houses were burned and it was basically torn apart. But still, this was not the end because even though that the commanders of the Slovak forces were arrested, a lot of the partisan groups were still all around Slovakia and there was Red Army and the first Czechoslovak army corps coming from the east. And we know that Slovak National Uprising was in the end successful, but only because of the help of other countries. 
Now I have some pictures. So here you have map of Slovakia and the situation in the first days of Slovak national uprising. We can go from the west. So it's the border between the protectorate of Bohemia and Moravia and Slovakia. And this was the territory of German protection zone between what was before one country. The yellow one that is basically just in the capital was the territory controlled by Germany. Then we have the north, which is something between brown and pink. Then you have the territory outside of our today's borders. And this is the territory that was controlled by Slovakia, but today is Poland. The green territory, so the, all of the southern border and also the eastern border, was territory controlled by the Hungary. And finally, the area of central Slovakia, that is like orange, we can say, was the territory controlled by the rebels, so partisans and the resistance. And the cities that are marked in the map were also important for the resistance. And you can see the biggest one in the center is Banska Bystrica. Also, we have their blue arrows that are marking the advance of the German Wehrmacht. And you can also see names of the groups. Okay, let's go on. Here I have another map, but also with representatives and a little of chronology. This can also help you in the presentation to, to imagine it better. So you can see Jan Golian and Rudolf Viest in the top left, and Alexander Mach and Josef Tiso as the representatives of Slovak state. Then we have the, the very same map we can say that we had in the previous slide. And we have the chronology, so you can read it. You can read it, but it's pretty much what you have in the notes and what was in the first slide. And here I have some pictures. So I will start in the left bottom picture. And this is the mo memorial at Dukla. Also during the Slovak National Uprising, there are celebrations as well as in Banska Bistrica, because this place was also important. Picture in the left top were the partisans group, and this is their natural habitat, so in the woods where they spent most of their time and fought most of their battles. Now the picture in the right in the top is when the Germans occupied Banska Bistrica after they defeated the Slovak forces led by Jan Golian and Rudolf Viest. And the picture on the right in the bottom is the memorial near Svidnik, which, as I mentioned, was after that nickname, Wally of Death. So you can see this monument with two tanks. One is German and one is Soviet. Also, you have the link for this documentary I mentioned, Moje Povstanie 2, but I will also post these links to Google Classroom. It's just there if you would like to watch the whole documentary, but I will give you just the, the part so everybody will have just one story. Okay, that's it. So today we learned that after 1942, when Germany lost a lot of battles, even Slovak clear fascists started to realize that the end of the World War II is very close and it doesn't look good for the Germans. After the Christmas Agreement was signed, one united uprising started to be organized and its main goal was to help the Red Army to cross the Carpathian Mountains. Slovak state was not able to avoid partisan campaigns itself, so, so Germany did not trust the Slovak government anymore and they had to solve some of these things for them. There were two plans for the uprising. A. Everything will go well and B. Consider the possibility that plan A would be revealed and the things they needed for the uprising will not, would not be prepared. That's why Karvaz and Zatko, two economists, were transferring the finances from Bratislava to Banska Bistrica, center of the uprising, and they were hoping for the best. But when German military mission that traveled from Romania to Germany was killed in Wiltki, the Wehrmacht reacted with the occupation of Slovakia. Under that circumstances, Slovak national uprising was activated as the plan B, 
announced in the radio by Jan Gullian on August 29, 1944, with the message Zacznijcie z vystiahovaním. Slovak National Council was activated, declared itself the only right for government, but it had still a lot of organization problems. Slovak National Council so asked the USSR to speed up the Karpas to Dukla operation to free the eastern border. The Battle of Dukla Pass was one of the biggest and bloodiest in Slovakia. The season of the pass by Soviets and the first Czechoslovak army corps was not the end of the fighting because it spread to eastern Slovakia. To secure sources for the uprising, the Free Oaks Airport in Sliac was a strategic point air bridge through which the USA and mainly USSR supported the uprising. They also sent manpower partisans to fight there. The Slovak forces that consisted of partisans and mobilized soldiers led by Jan Gullian and Rudolf Viest were defeated on October 27, 1944 in Banska Bystrica and after that commanders were arrested and died in the concentration camps. As the reaction to the uprising, more than 60 villages were burned and I wanted to remember at least three villages, okay? That's it for today. But steady still on the regular basis. Stay healthy to another lecture. Bye.